Hello everyone, I'm Chris Hernandez and this is the Weekly Report, a look at news from the city of Kansas City, Missouri. The mayor recognized Kansas City businesses this week that accepted and completed the mayor's 2014 Energy Challenge. About two dozen companies were recognized for their extraordinary participation and five were honored for receiving Energy Star certification. Uh, thank you for making energy efficiency a priority in this city. It, this is yet again something for Kansas City to be proud of. I mean, here we are one more time uh, at the front edge of, of what's going on in the country in this sector. Uh, it, we're not lagging behind. We're not in the middle of the pack. We're at the front end. And that's something, once again, for Kansas City and Kansas Cityans to be proud of. The city participated in a number of Earth Day events this week. The KC Green sponsored a trash bash litter cleanup. City employees picked up trash in the Dunbar and Swope Parkway Elmwood neighborhoods. Residents were also encouraged to pick up litter in their own neighborhoods and tweet the pictures to us. Residents could also recycle old electronics at a drop-off event held by Bridging the Gap in front of the Sprint Center. And another Bridging the Gap program, the Heartland Tree Alliance, partnered with the city to plant trees along Southwest Boulevard. Planting more street trees in the downtown area was a suggestion generated by the Dead Letter Office on Casey Momentum, the city's virtual town hall. The trees will attract more customers to the small businesses along Southwest Boulevard. Support from the City Council's 4th District PIAC funds and the William T. Kemper Foundation helped make this project a reality. Trees have so many benefits. The environmental benefit is, is obvious, but and that's part of our sustainability initiative in the city. But the other thing is it's just the the atmosphere of the sidewalk. If it's if it's a hot day, you want the shade of a tree, you want to be able to walk in this area and see the beauty in the spring when the buds are coming out. In the summer, you want the shade, but it just makes this, the community look like um, the type of place that you want to be and that you want to have a business. The 18th and Vine Student Jazz Festival was held last weekend, featuring more than 50 middle, high school, and college jazz bands. It included a clinic with artist and resident Joe Locke. The event provides an opportunity for the students to learn more about jazz while gaining a deeper appreciation of Kansas City's rich jazz history. Now let's check in with some of our city's departments. Hi, I'm Heidi Downer with Kansas City Parks and Recreation. Spring is in full swing and KC Parks has many fun events and activities for you to take full advantage of the season. All aboard on Saturday, May 9th for a National Train Day celebration at the Kansas City Northern Miniature Railroad in Frank Vedic Park. The fun begins at 10 a.m. with live music by Rockin' Rob, face painting, free train rides, giant inflatable trains, and more. Train Day birthday party packages are available this year for even more fun. Visit caseyparks.org for all the details. Purchase an all-access pass and gain membership to all 10 KC Parks Community Centers. All-access passes are good for admission to fitness centers, open gym, public ice skating, and select classes. For a limited time, you can save $150 on an annual all-access pass. A better you is in reach, and for less than a dollar a day. Purchase your all-access pass online at caseyparks.org or in person at any of the KC Parks community centers located throughout the city. To learn about other events scheduled by Parks and Recreation, visit the department's website at caseyparks.org or give us a call at 816-513-7500. New technology is making it possible for the Kansas City, Missouri Police Department to easily find people who might wander off because of a medical condition. KCPD is the first agency in the metropolitan area to use CareTrack. It's a rugged bracelet that looks like a watch, designed for patients with Alzheimer's and those dealing with traumatic brain injury or autism. Captain Darren Ivey, commander of the Crisis Intervention Team, explains how it works and what happens if your loved one goes missing. 
So you can put it on this, on their arm, just like this, just like a normal watch, or it can be put on their ankle, or so it's worn on the leg. It's waterproof, and there's a little transmit in here that sends out a radio signal, and that radio signal um, is always transmitting at all times as long as the battery is good. I call 911, and you're going to say, "My grandmother, who uh, my grandmother has Alzheimer's, she's wandered off, and she is part of the Care Track program." You're going to say that because we've already taught you that when we fitted your grandma, and um, you will also give us a transmitter number that she, of her transmitter. If you don't know it, it's no big deal. We already have a sheet on grandma with her transmitter number as well as her picture and some other information you provided for us, so the officers in the field know who they're looking for and any special instructions with her. So once you've called 911, they're going to call out the on-call team of care track of officers who have the care track equipment, and will immediately deploy to the area of where Grandma was last seen. And if I feel we need more out there, I'll deploy the entire six-member uh, team out there, and we'll all be out there with equipment. The bracelet's putting off a radio signal, and this is what we're using to pick up that radio signal. So it's nothing more that's going to show us a direction, and it's going to give us a strength. And we know, based upon the direction and strength, where to start looking for a Grandma. It can pick her up. To, uh, anywhere from a mile away if we're just on regular ground up to five miles away if we happen to deploy in an aircraft. Thankfully, KCPD hasn't had to use it, but Captain Brad Deichler of Human Resources uses it for his own 12-year-old autistic son and calls Care Track a lifesaver. Usually we can catch him on foot within four or five minutes. We deploy the care track uh, when we can't find him in eight or nine minutes, ten minutes. Uh, that's when we pull it out and start uh, using the device because if we can catch him on foot, that's the best way. And if we haven't been able to find him in three or four minutes, then we'll go grab that and put it together, which takes a couple of minutes. And then we, we start trying to pick up a signal. And we've probably used it, I'm going to guess, about ten or twelve times over the last five years. If your child runs off one time and you only use it once, ever, it's worth it because the one time that they get away and you can't find them, I mean today it's 12 degrees and the wind chill is three or four. So my son weighs 53 pounds and he's almost 12. And you know, 20, 25 minutes and this, his body temperature is gonna drop 15 degrees, as skinny as he is. And an hour outside, as thin as he is, uh, the hypothermia would get him. And there's been four or five kids in the last two years freeze to death that are autistic. And a couple of times it was just 26, 27 degrees, but they were outside for two days. So you know, they, they'll crawl up into places and you can't find them. They'll, they'll crawl underneath things, trying to stay warm. And if you're looking, they could literally be three or 400 feet from your house. But if you don't have something to track them, you may not ever find them. Each of the department's six patrol division stations will have a tracking unit. A dozen officers have already undergone training to use CareTrack. First of all, it saves the most important thing, time. Time is of the essence when we're searching for a senior or a child. A child could get to a dangerous situation where they're going to drown, be hit by a car, they could reach out to somebody who's not very trustworthy, so we need to find them immediately. The same with the senior. Um, if it's cold weather conditions are extremely hot and they're out wandering around, that's usually when something happens to them because they fall down or they lay down somewhere and no one finds them. This gives us the ability to find them very quickly. On the other side of things, it saves a lot of manpower and um, for the police department because a normal search might take us 20 to 30 people. Well, with this, we don't need that many people. Um, we'll have them available when we needed them, but we can usually pinpoint that person pretty quickly. All you have to do is go to the CareTrack website, which is www.caretrack.com, and there is a place to a telephone number there. You can call an order, and all you do is you tell them that you're part of uh, the KCPD program, and uh, the owner there will get you all ordered, and they make them for you right when you order it. So it usually takes about three to four weeks to get them to us. They'll ship it to the police department. And then one of us will contact you and, and teach you how to fit your, your child or your, or your loved one, teach you how to change the batteries, and teach you how to test the batteries. KCPD is encouraging anyone with a loved one who suffers from a disease or disorder that makes them prone to wandering off to use CareTrack. Again, email kcpd at caretrack at kcpd.org if you need more information. I'm Sergeant Shelley Gaddis. Have a safe week. 
The city of Kansas City, Missouri is calling for nominations for its Casey Green Neighborhood Recognition Program. The program recognizes neighborhoods that have implemented sustainable practices. Applications will be accepted until June 2nd. Forms are available at kcmo.gov. Just search for Neighborhood Recognition Program. Or you can call 816-513-3460. The city's Casey Green Initiative advances social equity, economic vitality, and environmental quality by promoting sustainable practices in projects and programs citywide. For more information about these stories, please log on to kcmo.gov and search for the weekly report. To watch this program again or other Channel 2 videos, visit our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash kcmocco. That does it for this edition of the weekly report. I'm Chris Hernandez. Have a great week.